सो वेलकम बैक एस्पायरिंग सर्जन एंड फ्रेंड्स टू अनदर कैप्टिवेटिंग एपिसोड ऑन ग्रोइंग हर्निया सर्जरी सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई वुड लाइक टू अपोलजाइज टू माई स्टूडेंट्स दैट दे हैव बिन वेटिंग फॉर दिस हर्निया सर्जरी वीडियो फॉर लॉन्ग टाइम बट ड्यू टू टेक्निकल इशू एंड वी हैव रिकॉर्डेड दिस वीडियोज फॉर टू थ्री टाइम्स बट द क्वालिटी वॉज नॉट अप टू द मार्क सो देर वॉज अ डिले so in this short video we will discuss basically the introduction epidemiology risk factors and some indication of open surgery and some basic applied anatomy and the next section that is uh, video part 4 and 5 we will demonstrate the live surgery and we have already uploaded two videos uh, in this uh, hernia surgery covering the pediatric hernia herniotomy they uh, they are good videos and i hope you have had the chance to watch them and they are available on our youtube channel and our app do watch them to have a better perspective of the anatomy and of the subject all the videos on our app and youtube channel are meant for uh, information and education purpose only and is not a substitute for uh, expert and professional advice so the main objectives of uh, this video series will be that we want to cover the uh, abc of groin hernia repair uh, for surgery trainees and we will cover every detail in uh, minute details every step will be covered uh, we want to discuss the applied anatomy how to interpret the groin anatomy for trainees what is the rule of 2 3 4 covering the uh, mesh overlap which one is million dollar stitch to basically avoid the recurrence of hernia and what are the common mistakes and uh, what are the preventions so uh, i hope you will get benefited so friends the mention of hernia is there uh, approximately 1500 bc uh, in the basically medical literature and it is one of the most common disease known to the mankind and uh, only treatment definitive treatment for hernia regardless of the origin or type is a surgical repair as i always tell my trainees that hernia is one surgery around which the general surgery evolved as a surgeon uh, we have a very long and uh, good history about the hernia repair that's something which we could cure permanently and every surgery trainee every surgeon should be well versed with hernia repairs because uh, i mean uh, any mistake or any fault in hernia repair is not acceptable because uh, this is the core uh, surgery which everybody should be well aware and should be master so collectively groin hernia inguinal and femoral hernias are labeled as groin hernias so uh, what are the documented uh, well documented risk factors for groin hernias will be male sex there is a 8 to 10 fold higher chances age there are two peaks described in literature one is 0 to 5 years that is pediatric hernia and another is 75 to 80 years of age then if there is a family history of groin hernia in first degree relatives there is a systemic disease which is uh, concerned with the impaired collagen metabolism and history of prostatectomy especially open prostatectomy uh, there is a increase uh, four fold increase risk for the hernias so obesity it has been mentioned but the literature is biased and sometimes they say that if there is a lot of visceral obesity it covers the hernial or orifices and there are lesser chance on the other hand uh, there are some literature so uh, that suggest there is a higher chance in obese people so uh, still uh, we don't have any uh, basically conclusive evidence to support in either way and all these facts which i'm giving here are from the literature from up to date and and from other pubmed index articles so these are the risk factors for recurrence of hernia after the repair and uh, so i mean the aim of sharing these is that the surgery trainee should be well aware when counseling these patients at so, so if you are a such and such and this is the uh, i mean scenario then the chance of recurrence will be a bit higher as compared to the general population that includes female sex Uh, direct involved hernia as uh, compared to the indirect involved hernia uh, and uh, surgeon low volume or in, in, in experience and other respectors will be white race chronic cough chronic constipation smoking and contralateral groin hernias so again a female sex and if she had a history of direct involved hernia repair then uh, there are even very high chances because as we will discuss further that there are high chances that she had a femoral hernia and which was repaired as a direct involved hernia and now she will present with a, a femoral hernia again that will be labeled as recurrence 
So in the present era of uh, minimal invasive surgery, and I am not against the minimal invasive surgery, that has its own advantage, but there are some uh, relative or absolute contraindication, which will be when the patient is not fit for the GA, like a COPD patient, uh, there is a high chance of CO2 build up. Of the, if there is a prior pelvic surgery, laparotomy, where you cannot access the abdomen for safe uh, laparoscopy, or the patient had at the presentation strangulated or incarcerated hernia, they are large clotal hernia which are difficult to manipulate laparoscopically. If there is a present of ascites or active infection, then uh, these all warrant a, a open surgery. And just remember that when performed by experienced surgeon, both open and minimal invasive surgery are associated with low recurrence rate and both are good with minimal invasive surgery has its own advantage of early ambulation and less pain. So if we talk about epidemiology, the lifetime risk of developing a groin hernia will be approximately 25% in male and 5% in females. And uh, I mean, considering the large population base we have, this is quite a significant risk and quite a, a large burden to handle. So uh, the groin hernias are more common on right side than left, 10 times more likely uh, and uh, likely in male more than female, as I said, and in men, the indirect inguinal hernia, which I have abbreviated as IAH, is more common than the direct inguinal hernia and DAH, and the ratio would be 2 is to 1. So just remember, so the, the incidence of indirect inguinal hernia is twice as compared to the direct. And in females, the indirect inguinal hernia is five times more common than the femoral hernia. So just remember, the femoral hernia is most common, I mean, uh, I mean, it is the uh, uh, hernia which is most commonly found in the female, but still the indirect inguinal hernia is five times more common than the femoral hernia. And another thing is that the direct inguinal hernia is very rare. And uh, so, I mean, I mean, uh, just remember that, as I said, if you are repairing a direct inguinal hernia in a female, always look for femoral hernia because there are higher chances that we are misinterpreting the diagnosis and we are missing the femoral hernia. So whenever we are preparing a patient for uh, elective, uh, I mean, hernia repair, what are the pre-op consideration as a trainee, you should always look for, is there any skin infection, uh, I mean, in the incision line, or is there any fungal infection also, which becomes a relative contraindication for the surgery? Is there any systemic cause of increased intra-abdominal pressure, or if there is a history of undue straining, constipation, patient who is a chronic smoker should be advised to basically give up the smoking uh, for at least three to four weeks prior to, prior to surgery because as i said there are a higher chance of recurrence in smokers the benign prostatic hypertrophy clonic lesion in the elderly should be ruled out because they can lead to the increased pressure increased straining and honey can be a uh, i mean as a secondary manifestation of these uh, primary diseases or is there any history of sensitive to your drugs, local anesthetics to be ascertained and always remember to take a written and informed consent explaining all the uh, vital steps and uh, basically side effects or the recurrence rate. So in our institute we follow spinal anesthesia and obviously it is the ease of anesthesia that is followed by otherwise uh, in major institute like in a Lichtenstein hernia institute they follow only local plus uh, mixed with the anxiolytic or sedation and usually the lignocaine one percent or half percent with uh, with or without analgesia preferred and I, I advise my viewers to go through a video which in which we have discussed about the local anesthetic in detail that include the how to calculate the doses how to give a mixture of it and uh, how to basically administer so everything is covered and this video is again available on our youtube channel as a free video and on also app also so do watch it to have a better understanding that how to calculate or administer the local anesthetics so the position will be always fine and uh, if you're not following this then start following that whenever you are operating an open groin hernia keep a small pillow under the knees that flexes the knees up to 10 15 degrees and decreases the tension at the groin region and makes surgery easier and better for the patient so now we will discuss a little bit about the relevant applied anatomy and basic aim of uh, keeping these videos short is to basically otherwise i mean these videos become too lengthy and it is difficult to hold the attention of viewers and students for a long time so uh, this was a 36 year old male uh, the life surgery as i said will be dis demonstrated in the next part of this series so with no known comorbidity, uh, the diagnosis was right direct inguinal hernia and plan was right Lichtenstein mesh hernia under spinal anesthesia. 
so uh, you have to understand this uh, external landmarks and anatomy so the interior sphere i'll explain i have uh, basically demonstrated and marked similarly the pubic tubercle so the i mean this uh, direct line uh, along the pubic tubercle uh, to the asis will be the uh, this uh, inguinal ligament the popper ligament and uh, uh, the incision line as marked in by the uh, with this black uh, marking uh, is the approximately 2 to 2.5 cm above the groin crease and the superficial ring deep ring are marked and just remember these marking that the inferior epigastric vessels are basically medial to the deep ring and the cord structure will emerge from the deep ring which will be lateral to the uh, inferior epigastric vessels so i mean this anatomy again you will see in a reverse manner in the uh, lap surgery and we have also marked the this spinal umbilical -like line and the uh, this midline line. So the concept of hazel best triangle, I mean, this is not so important in the present era, but uh, as a surgeon training, you should know. So the boundary will be uh, merely the little border of the rectus uh, abdominis, that linea semilunaris. Then another line will be this uh, basically inferior epigastric pedicle, and below will be uh, this uh, pubic. Uh, or this will be uh, inguinal ligaments. So this is a hazel back triangle. So if the hernia is in the hazel back triangle, that is, it is medial to the inferior epigastric vessel, then we are dealing with the direct inguinal hernia. If it is lateral to the inferior epigastric vessel and beyond the boundary of the hazel back triangle then we are dealing with the indirect inguinal hernia and if the uh, hernia is below uh, appearing below the uh, pubic tubercle and uh, basically all the hernias will be above the pubic tubercle if the hernia sac or hernia uh, sac is below the pubic tubercle or below the inguinal ligament then uh, just suspect femoral hernia uh, we will demonstrate all the relevant anatomy during the live surgery also so stay tuned, we will demonstrate all the critical steps and uh, uh, in the next video and all the uh, um, basically main steps, uh, minute details all will be covered and how to mark the incision, how to basically uh, dissect, everything will be covered. And let's strive for a stronger tomorrow. Uh, I hope we will be your guide to seamless recovery with lichenstein mesh neoplasty. Do like the video, subscribe to our channel and share this content with your friends. And for a better learning experience, please download our app which is available for iOS and Android. The link for everything is waiting in the description and pinned comments of this video. So thank you very much for watching friends. Happy learning. Stay tuned. Thank you very much.